Alright, so let's continue here and hopefully end it off. So, as I was trying to say before, the video cut off. The Most High Yahweh, the same way he put the spirit on the 70 elders of Yasharal, it's the same way how he's putting the spirit on his chosen people now and these days, okay? This is why we read in Isaiah 32 and 2, it says each one will be like a, like a refuge, all right? Uh, uh, like a shelter in the heat of the day. You understand? So let's read this in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of Yahweh. Verse 4. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. So you see why the Most High Yahweh says that they will perish, but you will remain. You who made Yahweh your God. You see what I'm saying? You who have took refuge in His words. You who delight the manna that He's given His people. So let's read this in Numbers 11 and 18. Tell the people, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow, when you will eat meat. Yahweh heard when you waited, sorry, when you wailed. If only we had meat to eat, we were better off in Egypt. Now, Yahweh will give you meat and you will eat it. Verse 19. You will not eat it for just one day or two days or five, ten, or twenty days. But for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils, and you loathe it because you have rejected Yahweh who is among you and have well before him saying why did we ever leave Egypt you got a precept yeah this is Micah 6 and 14 it says you will eat but not be satisfied your stomach will be empty you will store up but save nothing because what you save I will give to the sword and see that and that's what happens when you reject the word of the Most High. See that? So us who took refuge in His words, right? We're delighting in His manna and His, you know, choicest of meals that He's giving us. So let's read this in Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. A feast is made for laughter. Wine makes life merry. And money is the answer for everything. You see that? Money make the world go round. So let's go ahead and read this. In Proverbs 18 and 10. It says here, The name of Yahweh is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Verse 11. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city. Okay? Key point, key verse. Keep this in mind here. They imagine it. Remember that word? Remember that key word? Imagine, right? So look what it says. They imagine it a wall too high to scale. Okay? Just like it says here in Isaiah 65 and 2. All day long I have held out my hands. You see that? Because the Most High Yahweh says that He will feed His people with the choices of meal. He will give them the, that spiritual manna. But you people reject it. Okay? So it says, All day long I have held out my hands to an obstinate people who walk in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations. You see that? What is their own imaginations? Well, they're metal gods coming back alive to pick them up, you see? The rise of iron. <laughs> Let's go ahead and show you this here again. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it a war too high to scale. Okay? So, let's read this in Isaiah 48 and 4. For I knew how stubborn you were. Your neck muscles were iron. Okay? Your forehead was bronze. Talking about our people. Why? Because they wanted to follow in the ways of the other nations. The other nations, you know, they, they believe in their own lies. Okay? They believe in their own imaginations. You see, they're waiting for their metal god, Shiva the Destroyer, to come back. Or their, you know, wooden Hamashiach, Idushai, to come back. So it says, for I knew how stubborn you were. Your neck muscles were iron. Your forehead was bronze. Verse 5, therefore I told you these things long ago, before they happened, I announced them to you, so that you could not say, my images brought them about. You see that? My wooden Hamashiach and my metal Shiva ordained them. You see? Okay? So again, 
It says here, I told you these things long ago, before they happened. I announced them to you so that you could not say my images brought them about. My wooden image and metal God ordained them. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 20. Look what it says here about you people, right? That take refuge in idols. You people out there that think that your money is going to save you. Look what it says here. Isaiah 44 and 20. Such a person feeds on ashes. Why? Because the Most High Yahweh says that uh, in these days, they're going to throw their idols to the fire. You see that? Where is the fire? The fire is in Jerusalem. The furnace is in, is, in, is in Jerusalem, like it says. The fire is in Zion. Okay? So you people out there, right, that want to continue to believe in lies, this is going to be your food. It says, such a person feeds on ashes. A deluded heart misleads him, you see? Pursuing their own imaginations. They're waiting for the Hamashiachs to come back. They're, they're metal gods and their wooden images, you see? All right? You see what happens when you're all about your money? All about, you know, things that men have given you? You're going to feed on ashes. Because all that's going to get burnt. That's all tangible. Money, idols, religion. It's all tangible. That's why it's getting burnt right now. All right, let's go ahead and show you this here. The Most High Yahweh says, The people's labor is only fuel for the fire. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 13. Has not Yahweh Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire? That the nations exalt themselves for nothing? Okay? Again, Most High Yahweh says, By fire and by water it shall, be, it shall be cleansed. So, verse 14, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge. There go that water. You see that? So you see what happens? Once you go through the fire and then you get the water, you become refined. All right? This is what's going to happen to you people. You're going to change. If not, you're going to perish. So it says, For the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. All right? So, again, you people out there who have not, you know, taken it to heart, you people out there who are, who are not considering these words, well, you're going to continue to feed on ashes. Isaiah 44 and 20 again. Such a, such a person feeds on ashes. A deluded heart misleads him. He cannot save himself. You see that? It doesn't matter what you take refuge in. Your money, your idols, your metal gods can save you. You can save yourself. Look what it says here. A deluded heart misleads him. He cannot save himself. Or say, it's not this thing in my right hand a lie. All right? This is why it says this here about Esau. Isaiah 47 and 14. Surely, they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. Why? Because Esau makes idols and he bows down to them. Esau is the blacksmith. He's the carpenter. He makes these weapons of war, right? So it says here, surely they're like stubble. The fire will burn them up. They cannot even save themselves. See? They cannot even save themselves from the power of the flame. These are not codes for warmth. This is not a fire to sit by Esau. See that? Because Esau is, a, you know, he's a wild hunter. He likes camping. He likes hunting. But the Most High God says, this is not a fire to sit by and tell stories and, you know, roast marshmallows, Esau. Okay, these fires are going to burn you up. So, let's go ahead and show you this here again. Isaiah 44 and 20. He cannot save himself or say, It's not this thing in my right hand a lie. You see that? You like to make idols. You like to, you know, make all kinds of things of your own imagination. You like to bow down to it. This is why the Most High God says that in these days, everything that they have made is going to come toppling down on their own heads. Let's take a look at this video here, right, from Facebook, a page called Mental Flaws. It says, where would Jesus live when he returns? Spoiler, this house is in the Bronx. So let's go ahead and I'll take a look at this here, right? Because they like, you know, they like following their own imaginations. They like believing their lies. This mansion in the Bronx was designed for a very special resident. Jeebus Geis.
1928, a New York religious group called the Outer Court of the Order of the Living Christ built the house for the second coming. It was to be left empty, so when Jebus returned to earth, he'd have somewhere to stay. In 1958, the religious order disbanded and the house stayed empty for years. A New York couple eventually bought it a few decades later. Again, that's, you know, there's these people being haughty, proud, arrogant, following their own evil imaginations. You see that? So this is the reason why the Most High Howard says that a, a curse devours the earth and its people must bear their guilt. All right? They want to continue to wait for the Hamashiach? You want to continue to wait for your, you know, evil imaginations to come to life? Well, you're going to bear that guilt. So there you go. You see what happens? When these people want to follow the way, you know, of the other nations. See what happens when you are drunk with that wine of violence. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, sorry, 7 and 12. Wisdom is a shelter as money is a shelter. But, check this out now. But the advantage of knowledge is this. Wisdom preserves those who have it. Okay? So this is what happens when you people out there believe in man-made gods, you trust in men, right? You will not be able to prosper. As we bring out many times in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5, right? Most High Yahweh says, the earth is under a curse. Why? Because you follow man-made gods. Jeremiah 17 and 5, this is what Yahweh says. Curse is the one who trusts in men. That means man-made laws, man-made gods, man-made everything. You're cursed. So therefore you must bear your guilt. So cursed is the one who trusts in men, who draws strength from mere flesh. You see that? Okay? Who draws strength from mere flesh. And whose heart, whose mind, remember, in the beginning of the first part of this video, I stated to guard your mind, I stated that you must have the most high Yahweh in your forehead. Okay? If not, you're gonna lose your mind in these days. All right, you will be thrown into utter darkness, like the Most High says. So it says here, and whose mind, whose heart turns away from Yahweh, what would happen to that person? That person will be like a bush in the wasteland. They will not see prosperity when it comes. You see that? So you're going to be waiting for the Hamashiachs, you know, calling on the name of your metal gods, and you will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert. In a salt land where no one lives. Okay? Again, that person will be like a bush in, in the wastelands. Just as we read here in Isaiah 44 and 20. Such a person feeds on ashes. A diluted heart misleads him. He cannot save himself or say, It's not this thing in my right hand a lie. You see that? Why? Because, you know, they're stuck believing lies. Okay? They are believing the, their own lies. This is why it says... They cannot save themselves or say, okay, they cannot say, it's not this thing in my right hand a lie. In other words, they are living in denial. They're living a lie. All right? That's why it says this here. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 21. Distressed and hungry, right, they will roam through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged. See that? They will become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God. Why looking upward? Because they're waiting for the Hamashiach to come. Okay? They're waiting for the Hamashiach to come. Cursed is the one who trusts in men. You see that? So you're cursed because you trust in men 
and you're taking out your frustration on your God. You're cursing your God and your king, right? Why haven't you come? How come Jesus haven't returned yet? Why people are dying? Because you're believing lies. The earth is under a curse and you must bear your guilt. You see that? That's why the Most High God says this here. Let's go ahead and show you this here. Let's see if we can find this. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 14. Yahweh Almighty has revealed this in my hearing. Till your dying day, this sin will not be atoned for, says the Lord, Yahweh Almighty. Okay? So again, you're going to have to get it right in these days. If not, you will perish off the earth. So let's read this here in Exodus chapter 13, verse 9. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead that this law of Yahweh is to be on your lips. For Yahweh, sorry, for Yahweh brought you out of Egypt with his mighty hand. Verse 10. You must keep this ordinance at the appointed time year after year. All right, and what is this? This is talking about the Most High Yahweh's celebration, okay? His festival, the, se the festival of tabernacles. You understand? The firstborn, his first fruits, which is talking about Yasharel, right? Those that he have kept for himself right now in these days. Those that he have put his spirit on in these days. Those that are, that are satisfied with the manna that he is giving us in, the, in these days. You see that? It says, you must keep this ordinance at the appointed time year after year. Like it says here in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. You see that? So this is why those that believe in Yahweh, their God, who has no image, who has no, who has no form, they are able to live in these days. They are able to see this prosperity. This is this is why the words of the Most High is coming to pass because they're living, while everybody else is dead. Everybody else is in darkness. Okay, they're waiting for lies. All right. So again, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Why? Because it's happening now, all through the spirit of Yahweh alone. It says, though it lingers, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Malachi chapter 3, verse 13. It says, you have spoken arrogantly against me. Who? All these people that's waiting for their Hamashiachs. That's the reason why they're being thrust into utter darkness. All right, because the Most High God says that he has sworn by himself. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will swear in his name alone that he is Yahweh. He is the most high God and Savior of all mankind. See that? So if you're not willing to do that, well, you're going to perish off this earth. Because the most high God says that the arrogant, that the ruthless, they're all going to perish in these days. So it says, you have spoken arrogantly against me, says Yahweh. Yet you ask, what have we said against you? Let's go ahead and show you what you have said. Ezekiel 12 and 22. Son of man, what is this proverb you have in the land of Yasharal? The days go by and every vision comes to nothing. Verse 23. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Yahweh says. I'm going to put an end to this proverb. And they will no longer quote it in Yasharal. Say to them, the days are near when every vision will be fulfilled. Okay? So that's why in these days, you're going to have to be willing and obedient. Ezekiel 7 and 10. Outside is the sword, inside are plague, sorry, are plague and famine. Those in the country, talking about Assyria, those in the country will die by the sword. Those in the city, talking about Egypt, those in the city will be devoured by famine and plague. Verse 16, the fugitive who escaped will flee to the mountains. Like doves of the valleys, they will all mourn, each for their own sins. Okay? Verse 17, every hen will go limp, every leg wet with urine. Psalms 37 and 1, do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. Like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. 
Shalom.